Had the WHO done its job to get medical experts into China to objectively assess the situation on the ground and to call out China's lack of transparency, the outbreak could have been contained at its source with very little death. That was President Trump last week after announcing the U.S. would halt funding to the World Health Organization over its handling of COVID-19. But a report published by ProPublica says federal agencies supported the WHO before the president made his decision. That's according to internal documents shared with ProPublica. Yagana Torbati wrote that piece and joins me now from Washington. She is a reporter for ProPublica. Yagana, thanks very much for being with us. Briefly tell us about some of the most significant details you found in these documents. What we found in those documents was that for weeks before President Trump decided to cut off uh, funding for the WHO, um, USAID and State Department officials had expressed internally um, their own reliance on the agency, um, both internally and externally. So in public statements, the um, United States had pointed to its pretty robust funding of the WHO, um, in particular in response to criticisms that China was doing more on the global stage. And even internally, um, internal communications at the State Department and USAID showed that um, they were choosing to funnel a lot of their assistance that had been granted by Congress through the WHO, particularly in countries like uh, in the Middle East, um, in some countries where um, you know the conflicts make it so that not a lot of groups can actually be active, um, the WHO had been providing uh, some pretty crucial aid in the effort to um, fight the COVID pandemic. Well, you also reported that some officials inside the Trump administration warned against halting funding to the WHO. What were some of their concerns? They really focused on a couple of things. One, they um, really foregrounded the um, PR battle uh, between the United States and China. Um, these officials who were uh, uh, diplomats and officials within um, the State Department's Near Eastern Affairs Bureau, which is the bureau that deals uh, closely with the Middle East, they felt that uh, cutting funding for the WHO right now would really undermine a key uh, U.S. response um, to China and a key U.S. argument in, um, in, in this sort of um, war of words uh, when it comes to who is taking up the, the mantle of global leadership. Um, they also actually felt that um, it would undermine U.S. global standing more broadly and also that it might even put American lives at risk. Uh, in particular, they pointed to Libya, where there are about two dozen American citizens who have expressed um, a desire to be repatriated back to the United States, but who cannot currently get out. Um, these State Department officials noted in this cable that I saw that um, those people, those Americans rely on the WHO for um, health services. And if they face any sort of emergency, it's the WHO that would be um, uh, primarily providing that care. And so they worried about um, their health if the U.S. were to cut off WHO funding and so make it more difficult for the WHO to do its work. And you touched on this a moment ago, but the U.S. Agency for International Development channeled most of its pandemic response through the World Health Organization. What is the reality? Can the U.S. actually help other countries without it? There are many countries where the U.S. does have a robust presence. Um, in particular, uh, in many countries in Africa, USAID has been active for a really long time and has a lot of relationships with local groups and has its own partners that it works with there. Um, but as I mentioned, there are major areas, in particular the Middle East, but also in other parts of the world, where the WHO is one of the key actors um, and perhaps only the only key actor. Um, and the WHO is able and willing to do things that other groups, including the United States, are not able to do. They often take on riskier assignments um, where they their own health and safety of their own workers is at risk, but they have more ability to do that, more uh, just access to the things that they um, need in order to, to undertake those kind of riskier assignments. And so the USAID has really depended on them um, in past uh, responses, in particular to the in the Ebola response, and also in this current uh, pandemic. Um, they were really relying on them in a lot of countries, um, including Libya, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, to deliver um, test kits, 
to um, deliver, uh, to uh, even just to deliver expertise to those countries' public health officials that they really need to um, fight a really complex uh, pandemic like this one. So now the Trump administration is going through a 60-day review to determine where to redirect the funding. Is it clear what we can expect from that? Actually, today, a couple of Trump administration officials, including John Barsa, who's the acting administrator of uh, USAID, um, gave some statements about um, the review and about the decision to cut funding. And um, what Mr. Barsa said was that it would be a really all-encompassing review over the next 60 to 90 days. Um, that they would really be trying to look for all of the issues within WHO's management um, and the ways that it may have hidden the real um, uh, realities of the pandemic early on. Um, but one thing that he also said, which uh, may give us a clue as to the final result of this review, was that during this review period, they're also going to be searching for some new partners uh, to replace the WHO in some of these countries. Um, so we can kind of see USAID already preparing to um, move past the WHO as a partner, um, at least in the near future. A lot of open questions this is raising. Yaginator Badi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.